a cartoon uh, contest to draw Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and uh, we know what happened in Texas. A couple of people uh, came from Arizona, and they uh, uh, they got killed at the end, regardless of the you know of the details of the story. We see it every now and then, and it doesn't look like isolated events. Uh, some few years back in 2005 in Denmark and Sweden and, and other European countries, they started this uh, drive of drawing Muhammad وسلم, cartoons, smoke and the Prophet والسلام, and then you see Muslims always get angry and we see some consequences for that. But it ends there and then it appears again, Terry Jones a couple of years, a few years back here in Florida and uh, uh, he was leading this drive of burning the Qur'an, ahraqu Qur'an, kaza, and then uh, he disappeared for some reason. And then we see it coming back in Texas. So this is something that's it's not isolated, it's, it's connected somehow to each other. And it looks like a good business for those people. They are making some uh, uh, career out of that. She was leading, she was publishing some, uh, uh, running some uh, ads, uh, in, in uh, Washington and New York City and now she is leading this uh, kind of event and uh, all of that is comes under the uh, freedom of speech as if you know the only way to express your freedom of speech is to attack the Prophet well fine we're not here to defend we're not here to talk about the details uh, defend or criticize this or that but it's a good opportunity to remind us with the Prophet ﷺ We should say here, we should make it clear that uh, the action of those couple of guys who came from Arizona is actually crazy. This is crazy. Uh, no, most, you, Muslims usually will, will get offended. Yes, we are offended if anybody attacks the Prophet or say even a little word about the Prophet ﷺ. But the reaction I mean, even this incident, it speaks clearly. If you have millions of Muslims live in America and only two respond negatively, that's still good. Why didn't the, the rest of the Muslims uh, drive over there even though it was announced? Nobody drove there but two kids. Even their families rejected their actions. So we're not here to you know, uh, play this kind of game. But again, the good thing in that is we, it's an opportunity to remember an Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It happened throughout history. We're going to touch on some stories of people who attacked the Prophet Alaihi Wasallam uh, during his time and after his time and what happened to them. Just to know, we already know and we believe that Janab al Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He is protected, not only in himself, in his, his honor, in his life and after his death. Nobody can come close to that. And I was uh, watching the, one of the photos of uh, Terry Jones uh, after be leading a church and being a priest in a church and everything. He is now, do you know what he's doing right now? He left the church or they abandoned him or something. And he is uh, selling, uh, he's standing behind the French fries stand, selling uh, French fries and stuff. And I saw the, the picture. This is how he ends up. And yeah, I mean, Allah alam. Uh, what's going to happen to the rest? But uh, yeah, I mean, let's talk about the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent as mercy, was sent for nothing but to be a mercy. We know that, but we need to remind each other. We need to remind ourselves. Sometimes Muslims, unfortunately, they get affected by the Islamophobia drive. They get affected by what they hear uh, uh, as far as attacks of Islam. فالنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان رحمة بالإنسان بل رحمة بالحيوان فبما رحمة من الله لنت لهم It was only by the mercy of Allah that you become lenient to them. How he formed this society from those nomads who had nothing and he formed them into a successful generation that would lead the world after that. Even before the, he becomes a prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم we read in the seerah he sees this lady who is carrying some woods uh, in the, under the heat of Mecca, in the sun of Mecca, and he is offering him, Ya Khala, shall I help you? Let me help you carry, you know, uh, your uh, wood with you. And he would help her, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it, it happens again and again and again. And then in one of those incidents, she would try to, one of the ladies, she would try to thank him. She couldn't find anything to thank him, but to say, you know what? I couldn't find anything to thank you, but to give you this piece of advice. There is a crazy guy, uh, so-called in her words, 
his name is Muhammad, stay away from him. <laughs> she didn't know that he is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, and he didn't say anything والسلام, to her, he just there to help and to be rahmah lil alameen. Uh, rahmah the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yani he is the prophet and he is the leader. Abu Bakr Siddiq, his best friend, accepted Islam from day one, but his father, uh, Abu Quhafa, did not accept Islam. It took him too long until it was Amul Fatih. Uh, the conquest of Mecca or the liberation of Mecca at year eight after Hijra, and he was so old, so old person, but he decided to accept Islam very, you know, lately. And and uh, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu brought him to the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam to give him the bayan and to give the shahada and everything. And Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, يعني رحمة بالشيخ, why didn't you leave him home and just let me know so I can go to him? It's me, I'm, I'm supposed to go to him. يعني النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم هو الذي يذهب إلى الرجل في بيته يسلم عليه وكذا وبعدين يأخذ منه يتقبل منه الإسلام. So هذا رحمة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يرحم الصغير والكبير. You see somebody playing, he would sometimes play with the kids. Go down to the level of the kids. A child is coming to play with خاتم النبوة, the seal of prophethood uh, between his shoulders from the back. And this is something like special. But somebody would come and touch it and play with it, uncover it, he would leave it. He would leave and play. Another person, another child is playing with the, uh, a, a little bird and he would ask him, what happened to the bird? Ya Aba Umayr ma fa'ala al-Mughayr. Ta'akhud al-Jariya bi yadi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fatadooru bi fi sakh al-Madin. A little girl would take him, Ya Rasulullah, let me show you something, let me show you something. Playing with them. He is leading the prayer sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he would hear somebody, he would hear a little uh, uh, baby crying and he would have this mercy in his heart. Uh, for the, the feeling, what would be the feeling of the mother now she should be worried about her child and after leading, reading a long surah in the first rak'ah he would go Qulu Allahu Ahad in the second rak'ah very short out of his rahmah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he would, he would have said you know and, and this is you know uh, still makes sense well it's, it's, it's not obligatory a woman to come to the masjid now they come to the masjid they bring in their kids they make a noise and this is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sahaba he would have made it even longer or go as usual at least and then say something just neutral uh, after the salah but he didn't do any of that he actually did the opposite he went out of, of his track of his ibadah that he would love to make it long he would make it shorter because of this rahmah of him يقبل أولاده صلى الله عليه وسلم في بيئة لم تكن تعرف التقبيل ولا يعني الرحمة بالأولاد. He would kiss his children every time he comes in. He goes out his grandchildren in such a society that it was not the norm back then. They were like kind of desert people, tough people. They did not even know that you know this kind of kissing the kids and and you you could get an idea uh, about how tough they were. Uh, some of them you know some of them used to because they didn't like girls. They would bury them alive. This is how tough they were. They would bury their kids alive just a few years before that. Then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would kiss their out of mercy. He would kiss their, his kids, and one of the uh, uh, people he would ask him, "You do that, Ya Rasulullah? It's not fit for you. you. That's for women or something." He said, "This is rahmah that Allah puts in my heart. What would I do if Allah didn't put this rahmah, this mercy in your heart? That's it's not my my business." Then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would kiss the whole people. Uh, حتى الطيور سبحان الله in one of the battles he would uh, he saw a bird that the Sahaba they were trying they were camping somewhere and they had to clear this area and amongst the, the trees and branches that they had to clear there was a nest a nest for the bird and this bird uh, she had a couple of uh, what do you call it duckling or chicks couple of chicks in, 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 in the nest and she was the, the bird was kind of you know worried about the kids and the, the, the chicks and everything. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would go out of his track and he said, Man faja'a hadihi bi waladiha. Uh, who is uh, causing this calamity to this little bird in her, you know, chicks. Uh, make, make sure that you bring back the chicks to this bird. He would pay attention to that, alayhi salatu wa salam. عَرَفَ رَحْمَتَهُ حَتَّى الْحَيْوَانَاتِ We read in the seerah, even animals, they knew he is the mercy. He is mercy, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A camel would come to complain to him how harsh and tough his, his owner used to deal with him. He was not, he, not, he did not give him enough food, he would give him a lot of work 
and he was almost crying. The camel, that's the camel. It came to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as in the seerah, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would summon the person, call the person, and you know, would give him uh, advice to take care of this uh, of this camel. قلبه رحيم صلى الله عليه وسلم وحنون إلى أقصى ما يمكن أن يتخيله إنسان to the highest of the, of the levels he was there صلى الله عليه وسلم he would make in the dua اللهم من ولي من أمر أمتي شيئا فرفق بهم فرفق به ومن ولي من أمر أمتي شيئا فشق عليهم فشق عليه he was making in the dua oh Allah whoever is in charge of my ummah at any circle of charge of my ummah and he takes it easy on them رفق he is lenient to them he is soft he is you know Good with them, O oh Allah, deal with him likewise. Be soft, be, be lenient to him. And whoever is in charge of any circle of charge of on my ummah, and he uh, takes it hard on them, he is harsh on them, O oh Allah, deal with him likewise. Whoever does not show mercy, he will never be shown mercy by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. من حياة صلى الله عليه وسلم يعني if only those people would know those parts of his life صلى الله عليه وسلم rather than the the sections that have to do with war and then they take it out of context because he was merciful صلى الله عليه وسلم even in the battlefield even to his enemies but now you have enemies fighting fighting you coming to fight you all the way in Medina what should you do you should fight back you should fight back you have you see injustice happening somewhere and people do not have the rights what should you do this if this is the only way then you fight but taking that out of context and ignoring all of that is not uh, is not right. And this is what those people are trying to do. And they are actually abusing or uh, um, they usually call a couple of people. One of them is this guy in, in Britain, Anjum, whatever, Chaudhary, and just hard, hard, hard liner like them. Uh, he would quote the harshest of things. You should be killed. You should be that. And uh, subhanAllah, that's, that's what they're after. And they ignore all of these Muslims who completely ignore those things. A uh, few, few uh, incidents or stories that happened to the people who insulted the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam somehow. One of them is Utbah ibn Abi Lahab. Abu Lahab Amr Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Utbah ibn Abi Lahab. One day he took it too harsh on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he started moking at him and, and insulting him and insulting even Allah Subhanahu uh, Wa Ta'ala. And it was, he took it very uh, to the very extreme that the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called Allahumma sallat alayhi kalban min kilabik. For Allah, yeah, and he sent the dog of yours to take care of him. A dog, back then, it's, it's not only for the dogs, it's for the dogs and for what's so called nowadays the big cats. Big cats. So Allah sent that beast, a beast of yours to take care of him. And uh, Subhanallah, Abu Lahab, he disbelieved in the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He did not accept him as a prophet yet. He knew. قال أخشى أن يعني أعلم أن لدعوته لدعوة محمد موقعا. يعني I'm sure that his دعوة is is gonna happen somehow. I'm afraid that this will happen to you. They were traveling. He was traveling with his son, and then they decided to stay. Night falls, and they decided to stay somewhere in one of the valleys. And this valley was known to be a lot of beasts, especially lions, are in there. So he asked everybody to be around him and to put him right in the middle, even in a higher, in a higher place, uh, put something high and his son would stay up, up high. And he said, uh, if you really, if you respect me and you have any, you know, respect for me, please put my son right there in the middle because I'm afraid that the da'wah of Muhammad وسلم, is going to affect him or get to him somehow. And subhanAllah, they mentioned that a big lion came at night and it started smelling everybody started smelling the faces of every one of them and then he skips them no it's not this one until the the story goes he jumped to the high place that that he was utbah was up in the middle and he smelled him and he called he bite he got one bite and it was enough to take his head out of his body and uh, later on, when Abu Lahab came to know about that, he said, I knew that the da'wah of Muhammad is going to definitely affect him. That's mentioned in uh, Tafsir ibn Kathir and other books of uh, as Uh Subhanallah, even recently, uh, there was one story of a person, somebody from one of the Arab countries, he was making, I guess it was a PhD or master's degree or something, uh, somewhere in the West. 
and his message, his uh, uh, thesis was, was about uh, the Prophet Sallallahu somehow. And, and you know, here in the West, they, they deal with it from a historical, you know, point of view or philosophical point of view, not like they don't have this kind of respect for religion. So his mentor insisted that he should have something in there to belittle Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to criticize the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a person. And this person was, you know, in fi hayratim min anbi. He was, should I do it or not? But then he decided, yani he, he was weaker enough to accept to do that, add something to, you know, attack the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his uh, thesis. And then, subhanAllah, mentioned when he goes back, he found all of his family members in, in a big car accident. They were all gone. انتقاماً للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ولقى نبيه. And so many incidents down the history, even in his life, عليه الصلاة والسلام. الله عز وجل كل هذا تطبيق لقوله تبارك وتعالى إن كفيناك المستهزئين. Allah said, indeed, we suffice you against the mockers, those who mock you. إن شانئك هو الأبتر. They are the cuts. We will take care and we will suffice you of those who put you down and belittle you. قصة كعب بن الأشرف مشهورة حتى ابن الإمام الدمية ألف كتابا كامنا الصارم المسؤول على شاتم الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم وكانت أحداث حدثت في وقته ومنها ما ناله من أبي جهل عليه لعنة الله أبو جهل يشتو أتاك the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم at you know at every time he sees him and one day he said if I see Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم I will kill him once I see him, I'll kill him. He came, he prayed, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the Kaaba, and Abu Jahl came in front of everybody. He came all the way to where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is making sujood, and then he started coming back as if something is attacking him or something is intimidating him. And everybody was, was you know, in shock. What is he doing? There's nothing in there. Muhammad is in front of you, and you just took it in yourself to kill him. Go ahead and do it. Second time, third time, he came back, and they were talking to him. He said, Wallahi, by Allah, I saw a big, ditch of fire between me and him every time i'm trying to come forward the fire comes my way and i couldn't i couldn't do it and nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam later on when he was told he said by allah if he if he moves any further one step further angels would have taken him you know uh, snatch him and take him away <laughs> And another day, they were all mocking him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and saying things against him. And they took it to the extreme that the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam made made wudu, and he came out to them, and they were all seeing him with the eyes widely open, fi majlisihim, and he said, shahat wuju. He got some dust, a handful of dust or sand, and he just threw it in their face, just like he did in the night of Isra. And he said, shahat wuju. May all of these faces perish and that's what happened all of those people in the first battle between muslims and non-muslims in badr all of them uh, were killed one of the ways that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects the prophet and suffices him وسلم, against the mockers is that every time they were trying to mock him the Yahud or the quraysh they would say mudhamman his name is muhammad which means the most praised one but when they call him bad names, they would say Mudamman, the opposite, not the most praised one, the most uh, dispraised one. So they would say Mudamman. And uh, Sayyida, uh, uh, yani, was Sayyida Aisha telling him, Ya Rasulullah, you see, see them? how they, they make it, all of that, or Fatima. Uh, she would, he would say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but they, they attack someone else. My name is Muhammad, and they, they are calling names somebody else, Mudamman. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi did not take any of those offensive uh, reactions against the haters. In some cases, he did Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after having the, the, the state and everything. But usually, most of the time, he would be very peaceful against those who would attack him, including in Medina, Yahud, saying, As-Salamu Alaikum, uh, As-Salamu Alaikum, as peace be unto you. But saying, As-Salamu, means death, death, may death be to you. They say it in, in a short way, in such a way to mean death. And Aisha anha would get mad and he would say, she would say, didn't you hear? When they said that, she said, may, the, may death ascend, the same way you said it, may death and curse be up, upon you. She said, why did you say, why did, why did you say that? 
You said, Ya Rasulullah, didn't you hear what they said? He said, and you didn't hear what I said? I said, Wa alaykum. And unto you, they said, Assalamu alaykum. He replied, Wa alaykum. It's easy, as simple as that. He knew, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they are attacking him, but he would not come down to the level of the ignorant. And a Muslim should, be, should do the same thing. We should, we should not come down to the level of the ignorant people because it's meant. They are trying to arouse us or uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, get us angry to get to that level. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would defend the Prophet sallallahu when he ate this Jewish lady, stuck this uh, goat uh, with poison, very, very uh, uh, strong poison. And Nabi sallallahu he started eating it and all, all of a sudden Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave life back to this shah or this goat. And he talked to the Prophet sallallahu Ya Rasulullah, I'm poisonous, I'm full, I'm full uh, with uh, poison, do not eat me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defends the Prophet sallallahu in, uh, in this way. Uh, other ways Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would defend the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that subhanAllah, he would guide the person who attacks him. One of the very, very close friends of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they grew up together. They were the best friends, intimate friends when they were young. Abu Sufyan ibn Harith. Uh, he was even a foster brother of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi and they loved each other, they were always there. And then when he became a, a prophet, he started going the opposite. Uh, Abu Sufyan ibn Harith hating the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and taking him as an enemy and he was one of the very uh, dire enemy to the Prophet Sallallahu <laughs> Until one day, يعني, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala opened his heart and he came to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi and after a long time of fighting against him and, and, and uh, uh, mocking him alayhi salatu wasalam. He came with his family and everybody to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasalam. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasalam, he was kind of, he felt bad that we were friends and you know me since we were young. How could you do all of these? How could you go all of these years of, of, of uh, uh, hostility against me? He didn't accept him from the first time, but he didn't do anything. That's his enemy coming all the way to him. He just turned away from him. He left. And then Abu Sufyan ibn al-Harith, he, he, he went to Nabi Sallallahu and he was coming to him from his face, trying to talk to him twice, thrice. And then he said, well, if the Prophet Sallallahu did not accept me, I'm going to go, me and my family in the desert until we just die. Then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was told that that's what he's saying. He felt يعني, his heart become soft to him والسلام, and he welcomed him and accepted him and everything. And he becomes one of the great Sahaba Abu uh, Sufyan, uh, Abu Sufyan ibn al-Harith, رضي الله عنه. some of the incidents and cases of those who attacked the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And now we have some uh, duty on us. يعني we talk about the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is good thing. When we hear that, we, sh we should really educate ourselves about the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his sunnah and revive his life. Revive his life sallallahu alayhi wa sallam into our life. Because that's what he was sent for. He was sent to be a guide for us, alayhi salatu wasalam, a role model for us. Are we truly living our life like the Prophet I'm trying to get as close as possible to the way he talks, the way he behaves, the way he looks, the way he worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way he deals with others. We should try our best to be close to him. That's not gonna happen unless we do not, unless we know him, but we do not know a big part of his life, alayhi salatu wasalam. A lot of things about his life, salatu we uh, we, we, we have the chance to study, but uh, maybe we do not study it enough. Let's come back and study his life, والسلام, and study his deen, والسلام, and his akhlaq, because this is the only person that's going after him, following him, imitating him, copying him, is beneficial for you, is the best important, the most important thing for you. This is Muhammad, والسلام, and the more you get to know him, the more you would love him, والسلام, and the more you would present him better to others. And again, as Muslims, as community, we can always talk together. We need to fight back. Uh, fight not physically, but we need to push back. We need to stand up and talk. And uh, yes, you have the freedom, you, you have the, entire, the, the full right of freedom of speech, but you know, uh, freedom comes with responsibility as well. You are offending millions of people, billions of Muslims. And uh, at the end of the day, what you are saying is mostly wrong. And you have the, the masses have the right to know the truth. The truth about this person والسلام, is that he was not always chopping the heads of people. He was not a pedophilic والسلام, He was not all, none of these things that you put up there. 
that's not gonna just jump from the books like that or Sahaba will not uh, be given life back to come and preach to those people. We are here and this is our responsibility. From the very smallest circle of your classroom to the place of work, to the street, to the neighbors, to wherever we are, we need to be more positive as Muslims. We need to be positive and you know, standing up. We are Muslims, we're proud. Uh, that we are Muslims and we are proud to present our Prophet وسلم, to others first by living his akhlaq uh, many of those people who changed their situation at the time of the Nabi وسلم, many of them they did that because of, of his akhlaq like this lady in here he didn't say anything وسلم, he knew that those people are rejecting him but yet he is helping them he is helping this lady he is you know always open for uh, uh, for you know as a source of mercy and help and for his community for the people around him if you have any uh, idea to push back or to be more positive uh, please put that right now before we conclude inshallah or how or what should we do right now It's because they're strong. You know, because this is freedom of speech if anybody wants to say. So you don't don't be a hypocrite about saying about freedom of speech and then you know attack and cannot even mention one word about certain people and not even know about if you do that, that you will be jailed or whatever you will be punished with. And then on the other side, you know, you say, Oh, it's my freedom of speech. Islamophobia is fine. You can attack Muslims and uh, that's right, but again, that comes back to us. We need to even use this term, you know, this small group of people, and they have the right to defend their whatever they uh, they believe. But they're strong, and they they uh, you know circulate those things about their faith and about their history uh, to the level that they got some taboos in there. You cannot talk about that. You cannot talk about the Holocaust. You cannot talk about the anti-Semitism and, and and all of these things. But we Muslims, we, we, we have the tools. We have the tools in here, professional, educated. Uh, let's get this term Islamophobia up to that level. You cannot talk about that. You cannot hate Muslims for who they are. You cannot just um, uh, uh, yeah, and you get to that level of hatred, speech, and bigotry against that big section of, of our society. But yes, you are right, because we, we will never hear, uh, we never heard uh, this lady, Pam Giller, talking against uh, the Wall Street uh, thing. We people are, you know, claiming the right, justice and everything, and then the police was really harsh against them. And there was a freedom of speech. Why didn't you talk against that? They, she didn't talk about what happened in Ferguson, for example, when we see some people, you know, uh, expressing their view and demonstrating just as their constitutional right, and then the police was really harsh against them. She's not talking about that. She's just taking it as a career to attack Muslims only. And uh, that's what she's doing for a living, I guess. We should do a campaign that all Muslims in the United States are supposed to do a petition saying that let's do the same, you know, voicing the same law that the anti-Semitic we can start. We're supposed to, to gather and start getting signature and go find some lawyers and requesting that, you know, these anti-Muhammad so we can attack the Prophet and Muhammad the same. Yeah, that's that's a good idea, but the thing is, we need to take it to a higher level until we have representatives and uh, strong representatives in uh, the political arena and the House and the Senate here and there. People that can, you know, uh, know that Muslims will are there. They can support them or they can withdraw support from them, so they will talk uh, for what Muslims really want to to implement. But you know, alhamdulillah, we have a lot of effort, even though it's not an institution, an institutional, uh, uh, mostly from the students and the universities uh, and, and people like that. Here is, is doing a really good job, uh, the, the, the organization here, uh, amongst other organizations. But most of the time, actually, we are talking to each other here in the masajid or in closed circles, which is good for us, but it's not going to make a big of a difference out there. What really makes the big of a difference 
it will start from me and you dealing with each, with every one around us. That's the, at least something that everybody of us can do. We need to behave as Muslims with people around us. So when those people who deal with us, how many Americans I, I have dealt with since uh, I, have, I, I was born or I, was, uh, I came here or whatever. So day to day we live with people, we meet people. If we demonstrate Islam to them the right way, I think it's, it's gonna be, make a big of a difference, at least at this small level that is al-munkin, uh, that is the, within our reach, we can reach that level. So let's start with this at least, inshallah. And then the campaigns and all of these things, alhamdulillah, if you can do it, let's do it. Free speech is my change one day. Now you're talking, you know, about you cannot criticize the Jews. So maybe one day, 20 years from now, nobody can criticize us. Sure. That's when we can strong. If you look back 30 years ago in this country, uh, we don't have any voice at all. We don't have anything. We don't have massages, we don't have anything, but we establish ourselves. The main thing we need to connect with the community here. No. Seems like we always, you know, stay by ourselves. <coughs> we need to get involved with the community. We need to get with the people. No. We need to participate. Uh, three things we are short as Muslims in this country. One thing is we don't get into military. We need to start getting into military. Send our kids to the military so we can get some power in the military. That's what I'm Second, we need to get into politics. We don't, we don't, we don't just, get into If politics. you can explain what do you want to, <laughs> you just make it clear because it's online right now. Why do you want our kids to go to the military? To, to serve the military, America, so right? We can hold power, you know, to, to get power, to get somebody speaking in our behalf, in our community. But maybe politics and, uh, and you know, politicians true. are stronger. Than, too. We can have, when we have a voice in the when we get two, three, five, six, seven, eight generals, mm. As a Muslims in top right here, something will change, definitely. When we get into politics, maybe not me and you, but our kids, they get in, you know, growing up, we need to uh, uh, start getting them in, in, to be a lawyer and get into politics. Mm -hmm. Maybe they care for Islam. But we need as a community train some people to say, okay, let's get into office. Law level. What get about media? Commission. You start a commission seat. Get what to... about media? We need to see some Muslims in the media. Maybe over that's there, another so... thing, Muslim and media. We need they to will see a media. sister with hijab, or they will see a Muslim, a Muhammad, you know, famous, as famous as uh, Oprah that, that, that or something. Is, that is also you know, that that's, that's, gets to every house and every home and every room. So if we have a couple of Muslims, few Muslims in there, well, they are just like uh, successful oh. here. And, just the involvement of the community is very, very important yeah. to, you know, invite them, invite the, uh, your neighbors here, invite, you know, people, uh, send the message out, go out and, uh, especially Connect. in Ramadan, it's an opportunity for us to go and invite a friend here, come on here, you know, come see it, to dinner with us, eat, what, you no. know, these things Get out of make the a difference a little bit, but with time, something will change. That's right. And, you know, 30 years ago, I say 35 years ago, we, we never established. It takes time for somebody to establish and to become, you know, a member of society where he can contribute, he can do something different. No, uh, all so. of us here probably were immigrants. Some of us may be born here, but when we came, we come with it. Maybe <coughs> the students or somebody came on something else. It took time to establish ourselves to start building this masjid or that masjid or do that or that. So it takes time for something to be established. No, we are a community, a big community in the make, inshallah. Sure. But let's do something towards that uh, goal, inshallah. Anybody else? Yes. Um, I was saying, talk of the shape, lay out. If you don't have it, if you don't have something, you can't give it. If you don't have respect between ourselves and love between ourselves, we can't give it to the other people. That's why they are like, like some Cubans in Miami, they have smaller population and they still have a stronger voice because they're united. We're not united and within our community, we don't have love between us. No one is gonna respect us. If we don't have respect for ourselves, how is somebody else gonna respect us? All comes back to us, but I guess you're not talking about our community, you're talking in general, right? As, so, Muslim. as Muslims, yeah, in general. So, yeah, inshallah, unless we, uh, in the end, a lot of, uh, some scholars they say it's, they did that because it comes back to us it's us who by our weakness and, 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 and even by our crazy things sometimes we shouldn't you know we should not uh, 
uh, put our head in the sand. We have crazy people, we have terrorists and we have people who act in a crazy way, yet we have to see things for what they are. As we quoted the, the statistics, we are amongst the least communities that have such crazy people. Even if they highlight it and they put it in the top and they make everybody think once you say terrorism, that's Muslims, Islamists, Jihadists, we do have those. And we, majority of Muslims disagree with those people 100%. But yet, if you look at it for what it is, it's, it's the, one of the lowest rates of uh, uh, fundamentalists amongst any community. طيب let's conclude here inshallah ta'ala jazakum allahu khairan wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in again do not forget the event tomorrow inshallah please join us for the event the 